Good morning, everybody. Uh, today, this is the day. This is the day we wait for. This is the biggest day of the year. This is Easter Sunday. Praise be to God. He's ris he, he has risen. He's risen indeed. We praise God. Today, um, it's, the tw it's the 4th of April, 2021. Here we are at the sanctuary in Royal Illinois. I'm just going to make a brief uh, intro about what this does. I know this is a very simple cross, but the cross represents something that's powerful for us because this because of this when jesus died on the cross he took all of our sins you can't see this but all around the sanctuary we've got 13 crosses that represent various cultures they're different shapes uh different orientations but nonetheless they all show the idea of the cross i want to show you this one right here this uh, this one right here um obviously a cross and this thing up here that looks like a gear it's actually it's actually uh the shekinah glory it's a glory that only comes from god and the people in this culture this is in africa the people in this culture they say that the power of the cross can only be seen because of the shek the shekinah glory of god god shows us his glory through his son jesus christ i really like this image uh, this is uh, having a prominent place well, all the crosses here in the sanctuary do today. So uh, when you have the chance to come in, these are going to be up for several weeks. So I hope you enjoy these. But uh, before, as we begin, we begin in the name of the we begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jackie, would you please join me? Again, it's really, it's really great to have you with us. Thank you for letting us come into your home today. Amen. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus saves us. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ was put to death for our trespasses and, and raised for our justification. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew with a living hope. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Okay. Uh, we're we're going to move on to uh, the, uh, the Easter prayer. Let us pray, God of mercy. We no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase, Increase in, in our, our hearts and, and minds the, the risen, risen life we share with Christ. Christ. As we recall the crucifixion, release, release us into the, the resurrection to claim its power as we rise in newness of life and proclaim Jesus, who reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our reading for today is from the Gospel, uh, the gospel from John chapter 20. The Holy Gospel is, is given to us today. Jackie, would you begin? Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and took and looked in at the strips of linen lying, lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself and separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, 
one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I am not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them that I am returning to the Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them what, what, he, had said, what he had said things to her. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you, O Christ. Christ. Jackie, I'm going to uh, share some of these thoughts here. Mm-hmm. I know that uh, I know that we've all heard this story before. We've heard it many times. Um, I make mention of the fact that these crosses are around the sanctuary. All of these cultures that are represented by these different crosses, they have the same story. It's the same story that we read. It's it's read around the world. There's billions of people that know this story, and you have heard it many times. What does it talk about? Well, I'd, like to, I'd just like to emphasize this point to, to all of us. We share this with the confirmation class all the time. We have a story, and the story has to do with our faith in Christ. Christ comes to us in various ways. We have been exposed to Jesus and the teachings that have come down through the centuries. That's part of our story. He is who we are. We call ourselves Christians. That defines who we are. That means these things that we know are actually part of our dialogue, as part of our discussion, as part of who we are. And I offer this to you, that when we see these evidences around us of so many people speaking about Christ, that encourages us. We see this evidence, it builds our trust in who God is. And eventually all that trust develops into a solid and and fixed faith that we have. We know this story. There's a few lessons I'd like to share with you which which have come to us. Do you remember, what was the last thing that Jesus said before he died? You remember? Some of you may remember that. It's a very short phrase, but it's really really important. The phrase that Jesus said was, it is finished. That means everything that Jesus was sent to accomplish was taken care of. It was finished. Done. Done. That meant that when he passed away, there was nothing yet to be done, except the disciples were to take what they learned and carry it to the rest of the world. Jesus' role was done. Now began the time when the disciples, us as well, could begin our work. Um, What happened uh, just before he passed? Well, he said the phrase, it is finished. What happened next? What happened while Jesus was in the tomb? We know what happened before he was placed in the tomb. We know what happened after he left the tomb. What happened while he was there? What happened with the disciples, with Mary and all those women? What happened to the city of Jerusalem? What happened with all those people in those intervening that short time, Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday morning? What happened then? We're not sure. We have some ideas. I'd like to share with you something that uh, I think it's a very interesting comment that comes from later on in the New Testament. When Jesus' was, body was laid to rest on Friday, and before, on Friday and before Sunday, there were certain things that took place. When did he rise? We know that he, was, that he raised from the dead on Sunday morning sometime. We're not sure when. I'd like to share with you, with you, I'd like to share with you this passage from 1 Peter chapter 8, beginning at verse 18. We know that Jesus suffered and died on the cross. Here's what the text says. For Christ also suffered for sin once and for all. 
meaning that he suffered all the, all the suffering that needed to take place for all the sins of the entire world to be forgiven. Now, that doesn't mean that because the sins were taken care of that people would accept the, this, this amazing sacrifice that Jesus had for them. People need to accept the truth. How many people did Jesus die for? Well, it, it says he died for all. That's true. Now, we don't know the exact number, but people tell us, people tell us that half the people that have ever lived in history are on the world, are on the planet today. The current population of the world is about 7.8 uh, billion people. So if half the people are now living that have ever lived, well, that's about uh, 16 billion people. Jesus died for 16 billion people. Jesus died for the sins of every person that has ever lived. And he did it while he was on the cross. He didn't die for, he didn't suffer, he didn't suffer and, and die for their sins or suffer for their sins after he died. He did it while he was on the cross. In those few short hours on the cross, he died for the sins of 20 billion people or more. We don't know how many will, will be on the earth, but Jesus' blood takes care of all that. It says this, he died for all their sins. When he said it is finished, it really is truly finished. The passage goes on and says this, for Christ also suffered for sin once and for all, the righteous, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring you to God after having been put to death in the fleshly realm, but now made alive in the spiritual realm. And while in that state of being in the spirit, Christ went and preached to the spirits in prison who in the past were disobedient when God, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared. This passage from uh, 1 Peter indicates that Jesus he after, he, after he died, his body was in the grave, but his spirit went to hell. And he ministered to, and he proclaimed the truth. He proclaimed the truth of who he was while he, was, he went to that place. What happened on the Sabbath? What happened on the Sabbath day after Jesus died and he was placed in the tomb on the Sabbath day? Let me ask you this. At creation, after six days, after creation, what did God the Father do on the seventh day, on the Sabbath day? What did God the Father do? He rested. He rested because everything that he needed to accomplish was already done. I believe, similarly, that Jesus, when he said it is finished, meaning it was all finished, there was nothing left to be done to rescue and to redeem the world. And so on the Sabbath day, I believe that he rested while he was in the tomb. His body lay in the tomb. I believe that he rested. So what is this, uh, what is this point about, about Jesus going to minister to those or to preach to those that have been disobedient? Well, the text is pretty clear. It's not that he went there to redeem those that were there. He simply went to, to, to discuss because it says, uh, he went into the, to those who were disobedient when God waited patiently in the days of Noah. I think we're all, well, many of us are aware that the days of Noah are going to be very similar to the last days here on earth. Scripture tells us when it's like that in the days of Noah, people will be hard-hearted. They will be difficult to understand. They will be resistant to the truth. Because Noah, for those years that he was building the ark, he spoke, he talked, he, he preached, and he shared the truth of what was coming, and yet people rejected him. I believe it's similar right now. I believe these things will transpire again. But we have the opportunity, we have the chance, I believe, all of us, to share those things that we know. What happened on the Sabbath? God rested, and as he would have us to rest as well. I believe that every Sabbath day we are, we are encouraged to rest. 
I don't think that on this Sabbath day when Jesus' body was in the tomb that he went and, and, and went to, to go to work. I think what he did was, I think his body rested, I think his soul rested, his spirit rested. And there was a time between, I'm not sure about the timing of this, I believe that Jesus, when he was in the tomb resting on the Sabbath, after the Sabbath on Sunday morning, I believe that he encountered those spirits below and he went and he, and he, uh, he preached to them. How is that possible? People have asked me, well, if that's, that's not possible because there's such a f- uh, just a few hours there in those early morning hours of, of Sunday. I'd like to read this passage to you. This is from 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. It says, For the Lord a day is like a thousand years. You see, God who is sovereign, we know that He's omnipresent. He's, he is omnipotent. He's, um, he's, uh, he can be at all places. He can stretch time to whatever He needs it to be because He is God Almighty. He took as much time as He needed to be in that place as He spoke to those people. Why did He do that? I don't know. But we know that that's what he did. He went to share with them, to, to review for them what they, had, what they had lost. And I think it's really important for us to know that there are things that we are losing when we choose not to turn to Christ. What was, what was it that people, what was it that, that, that the disciples were, were like when, on that Sunday, on that Saturday? I believe that those disciples were fearful, they were anxious, they were hiding. Those disciples in that place, they were nervous about what to do in the city because they knew that what happened to Jesus could very well happen to them. They likewise could be incarcerated. Now let's get back to the text at hand. It talks about Mary. Mary was one of those individuals that she too was nervous and she was anxious. Do you remember the last reading we had on Good Friday? We talked about who were the individuals that were there at the cross. The predominant individual that was there was Mary Magdalene. She's the one that stands out. It's recorded. Uh, it, it talks about that in, uh, in the passage from John chapter 20 and in Luke 24. It says that Mary was there, but on, the, on that morning, on that Easter morning, in John 20 it says that Mary was there who was at the tomb. In Luke 24 it says that Mary and the other women were there as well. Why were they so anxious to be there? There's a good phrase that we can remember. Those whom are forgiven much, love much. Mary, according to Luke chapter 8, verse 2, Jesus is a cleanser from eight demons. She knew, she knew a taste of hell because those demons inhabited her body. And Jesus, by his power, cleansed her from that. Is it any surprise that she would want to be close to Jesus? Even though his, his body lay there, she was his true disciple. She wanted to be there. It says in uh, the Luke 24 passage, not only Mary, but there was Mary uh, Johanna, who was the wife of Chusa, Susanna, and Mary, the mother of James. These women had gathered there because they were totally dedicated to the person of Jesus. One of the commentaries I read said that all were there gratefully because they had been healed and delivered from spirits and from the spirits of infirmity. How, gra- how much gratitude did they have? It was amazing. It was powerful. Mary Magdalene was this solid individual. And as the, I'll just review this last part of this passage that, that was, uh, was said. Jesus, expo- Jesus showed and revealed to Mary that it was him standing at the tomb. She was crying. We know the story. We hear that. But listen to the directives that Jesus said. Jesus told, said to Mary, um, as she turned around, he said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Then he said this, Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. He called them his brothers, a a closeness. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news and simply told them what Jesus had said. That's all he asked of her. Simply go and tell them what you need to tell them. They chose not to believe it. They They may choose that. 
it's Mary's responsibility to, to once again be the servant and the messenger to tell people, to tell the brothers what they need to know. And there's other stories that we will reveal in, in, that, in that order. But for us, the question comes, what is it that we have been delivered from? What is it that God has done for us? What is it that Jesus' shed, shed blood has done for us in his death? Well, we have all these evidences. We have all these evidences as we weigh these things, we hear this truth, and our faith is built. I'd like to finish with this one. Uh, it's, it's an example that I heard, and it deals with the cross. There was a young, uh, a young man, a young college student. He was, um, he was very proud of himself and proud of his accomplishments, very confident in who he was. He was an athlete. He was, a, um, he was, very, he was on a college campus. He went to a very large university, and he was a, he was a swimmer, a diver. And some of his friends were Christians, and they shared continually with him about, about the importance of knowing Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And he just kept turning them away because he had bigger things to do, better things, more important things to do than talk about this Christ. But they were persistent. They just kept telling him, telling him. And gradually he began to think more and more about this, but he always turned it aside. Well, he was a champion athlete, and as a diver, he, uh, he would practice many hours on his dives. He was so uh, well-respected in his college community that he, was in a, um, he had access to the, uh, to the swimming facility anytime he wanted. In fact, he had his own key to the building. And he would very often go in there at night and simply dive. And there was a, the one side of the, the pool, the building where the pool was, one side was just all glass, all windows, so they could look outside. Well, this particular night, he walked up on the, uh, on the high dive, and he was making preparations to dive. And you've probably seen those divers, when they stand there, they, they do this, they sort of do this motion. It was, a, it was a moonlit night, and this young man stood there. He stood there like this, making preparations for his dive, and he saw on the wall his cast shadow. And he began to think about all the things that Jesus had done. And there he was in the dark with just the moonlight. And somehow what happened and what transpired, he decided, he came to the realization, Jesus Christ died for my sins. And as he looked at his own shadow on the wall, he saw the cross and he realized, Jesus died on the cross. I don't need to. So he stopped and he wept. He didn't dive, so he climbed down. He climbed down to the, the bottom of the ladder that led up to the, uh, the, diving, uh, the dive bo diving board. As he stopped there, he looked down in the water. There was no water. Someone had come in and drained the pool. If he would have dived, he would have died in his sins. He would have crashed on the bottom of that empty pool and he would have broken his neck and he would have perished. And he knew, he knew that Jesus Christ had saved his life. True story. We don't have to go through circumstances like that, but many of us do. Many of us come up to places where we're, we're caught between what should we do? Should we continue in our own self-confidence and our own arrogance? Or should we stop and say, Lord Jesus, Take my sin. You took it on the cross. Take it now. I, I willingly give it to you. Just please, Lord Jesus, live in me. <laughs> That's what Easter is all about. Because Jesus came back. And when Jesus rose from the grave, he proved that death had no power. Had no power on him. And it truly has no power on us. We do have an amazing opportunity to share with people. The people are waiting to hear the, the truth that we know. We know that truth. Brothers and sisters, wherever you're at, wherever you're at on the planet, there's many people that are eagerly waiting to hear what you have to say. And if they're not sure what it is, join with them. Take your scriptures, share with them. 
let them know about the powerful resurrection and the power that comes from Jesus, death and resurrection. I'm going to ask my wife to come up here right now. There's a song I'd like her to sing. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing. Jackie, uh, share with us. Indeed, what a glorious day to be able to reflect together and celebrate together. This is a, a hymn that I'll sing just two verses of and a familiar one that I hope you'll be able to join in with as we reflect, celebrate and prepare our hearts for prayer. Thine is the glory, risen conquering sun. Endless is the victory thou or death hast won. Angels in bright raiment rolled the stone away, kept the folded grave clothes where thy body lay. Thine is the glory, risen conquering sun. Endless is the victory thou or death hast won. No more we doubt thee, glorious Prince of life. Life is not without thee, aid us in our strife. Make us more than conquerors, through thy deathless love. Bring us safe through Jordan to thy home above. Thine is the glory, risen conquering sun. Endless is the victory thou or death has won. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> Appreciate you. Appreciate you. We have a few prayers that we'd like to offer on behalf of a a grateful people, and we have some petitions of gratitude and thankfulness to what God has done for us. Let's begin. Gracious Father, in this holy season, we once again are reminded of your blessing of our community of faith. We thank you for those families that are gathered here and throughout the community. We thank you for the witness that has gone out throughout the land. We thank you that we are a nation that has proclaimed the gospel of Jesus Christ and on this day, we as a nation celebrate, not just this nation, but congregations and countries throughout the world. We ask, Father, that you would please encourage us, build us, and may your words be on our lips and our declarations and your declarations be in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord Jesus, for your healing power of the cross across the nations, for those who know you, and Lord, for those who do not yet know you. This truth is real. Your heavenly, divine power is at work here in this world. And we thank you that we can lift up different people and places and just bring them, Father, before you, knowing that that healing power that is at work in Jesus has healed us from our sin. May that message of freedom, Lord, be spoken across this globe today. Mm, yes, and may many come to know you, even for the first time. And even deeper we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
for our young people, for prisoners, for foreigners, for government officials, for those who wait for guidance, because many are. We, have, we ask that you would please be with the immigrants that scramble across the surface of the earth, seeking a place where there's safety. Father, we know that there's, there are those who seek spiritual, physical, and mental release for the difficulties in which they're involved. Father, you can do that. You do that by guidance of your Spirit. Holy Spirit, we give you thanks for even the occasions now. We know that there's people being touched daily. We give you thanks for the witness that goes out by so many people in small ways and big ways. We give you thanks for the efforts of our government, for governments around the world who, who embrace Jesus Christ. We give you thanks, Father, for the opportunities that we have in our nation, even in, in communities like Royal, where we're farmers. We feed people and we touch lives. Father, we know that only comes from your good provision by the things we learned from the past and by the things we're involved in now. We think, give you thanks for these things. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father, we do pray in these days for all of those who are still yet affected by the COVID-19 virus. Lord, it has crushed many a spirit and Lord, it has driven many into caves of quietness. Allow us, we pray, to step out of that, those dark places. Lord, help us to see your light very especially on this day. We pray that you would come close to those who are feeling full of despair, even on this day. Mm. Presence yourself with them, Father. Those who are yet nervous in different countries, who are undergoing a second, third, even fourth wave of this. Mm -hmm. Lord, we pray for your healing and protective hand to be upon all. Thank you for the vaccines that are being rolled out. And we pray, Father, that that would soon bring freedom in many other ways into our nation. But Lord, we do first of all pray for that freedom of spirit that comes from your sacrifice, Lord Jesus, and your resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord Jesus, as you, while you were on earth, you touched the lives of many, physically, mentally, spiritually. We offer to you these petitions. We ask that you would please continue to be with the families of those that we have lost. Linda Frerichs, who was laid to rest just this past week, Please minister to her family and to the family of Ron Frerichs and Corny Johnson, her Bostiver and Robert Chandler. Minister to them, we pray, in these times of sorrow and sadness. We ask that you would please be with Emma Rademacher as she's gone through her procedure just this last week. Uh, we, ask we, continue, we, we continue in our prayers. Gracious Father, we ask that you continue to be with uh, Betty Holes and Emma Bloom, uh, please continue to be with uh, Debbie Suits and Harold and Edgar Hovland. We ask, Father, you would please minister to uh, Donna Putnam Carpenter, and especially, Father, we ask that you would please be with Randy and Patty Ferrix and their, and their struggle with their health issues right now. Minister to them especially, Father. Continue to be with Regina Grunewald and Herb and Bev uh, Thompson. Thank you for being with your continual watch care over Elizabeth Hofferman. And for, um, uh, for Jessica Sloan, we ask that you administer to her, uh, to uh, Una Francisco and Jan Ziller. We, are, we lift them up in their, as they go through their struggle with cancer. Continue to be with our colleague Lee and our colleague in, on the field, um, Jahangir. Watch over, watch over them. Continue to be with uh, John Sattler, Wilma Sloan, uh, Dennis Maher. Continue to watch over Dorothy Albers and Corey Abernathy. Claire Honnold, continue to be with Nellie Mansell and Shelby Nielsen. And Father, for our, for our dear loved ones and our colleagues and our, and our older brothers and sisters in the nursing homes, you have truly blessed them with uh, patience through the years and in this COVID situation. Give them a, a sturdy constitution that they would continue to turn to you. 
and that they would recall the words that you have shared with them over the years about issues of faith, because now is the time. We give you thanks, Father. And we give you thanks, Father, for our nation and the way we are bound together and we are called to serve you and to lean upon you. We trust in you, Father, for all these gifts that you provide for us. This is Easter Sunday. It doesn't look like it. It may seem dark in here, but our hearts are... <laughs> they are filled with joy because Jesus is there. You, Jesus resides there. His Holy Spirit lives with us and in us. And for that, we're truly grateful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, lastly, we give you thanks that you have called upon us to serve you. Uh, and been, even in this time, we ask that you would minister to us. We give you thanks for the communion that will be coming up uh, when the service begins. Uh, we know that the, the shed blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. And we know that with this, uh, these, these means of grace, this baptism that we have and the, the communion that we share, it's a, it's a display of what Jesus has called us to do. We remember that from Thursday night or Monday, Thursday. And remember that this was, he was the new, uh, it was a new covenant that he's given to us. And for his words in our, in, in, that encourage us in li our lives, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive this Easter benediction. Almighty God, who raised our Lord Jesus Christ from death, lift you up and restore you to wholeness. But Christ Jesus the word of life, may he bless you and send you to be his witnesses. May God the Holy Spirit, who renews the whole earth, may he refresh you and gift you with baptism from this day, uh, from this day and always. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon me, on you, and may your, his countenance be ever before you. Go in peace and serve the Lord. And praise God, this is Easter Sunday. We are truly blessed once again. Blessings to you. Thank you.